Hi, my name is Laura Shervenak, and I'm the Vice President of Professional Development here at Explore Learning. Today I'm going to be planning a lesson using a gizmo that I haven't used before, and I'm intending to, to use that lesson in a whole group setting. You're going to have the opportunity to watch over my shoulder as I plan, and I'm going to be thinking out loud as I do so, so that you'll have that metacognitive look into my process as I plan. So first I want to find a gizmo that matches my objectives. I'm going to go to Browse Gizmos and I want to look at Academic Standards and find the Common Core Standards that uh, I'm ready to teach. I'm going to 6th grade and I'm looking for Unit Rate. There's Ratios and Proportional Reasoning. Excellent. Understanding the concept of a ratio and ratio language. I'm a little bit beyond that. Understanding the concept of Unit Rate. There we go. Um, a, B associated with Yep, and even the next one, measuring motion is what I'm looking for. The next one even goes into that. All right, awesome. So I want measuring motion. So let me take a look. So we have a description of the gizmo at, at the top, and we have learning objectives listed right there. Understanding the meaning of speed. Yep, okay, this is what we want. Cool, all right, so I want to see uh, the exploration sheet answer key. I want to go through the key on one side of my screen and the gizmo on the other side so that I can see what the gizmo does and how I can use the exploration sheet for my lesson. Okay, we have a couple of prior knowledge questions. I could use those as a bell ringer. Okay, the gizmo warm-up. Uh, sent on an African safari. Wait for the animal to pass by and press record. Okay, let's press record. The animals are walking. Here comes the giraffe. Giraffe is not moving real fast. About the same as the lion. All right, that's enough. Let's hit stop. What does it say now? Okay couple of basic questions and then okay this is just reviewing the controls on the playback side and on the playback side there's a play nice there's that same giraffe the time the total time and the current time and I can use the slider to move oh I can get that giraffe right next to that tree there we go the arrows, it mentioned that to be able to mark its place. All right, let's look at activity A. Estimating speed. Record an animal running and then look at playback. Click rewind. Estimate the distance the animal traveled. Okay, calculating and then measuring if you actually okay so letting them figure out what they're doing and then giving them a structure activity B form a hypothesis make a prediction on which is the fastest oh and then a whole bunch of measuring so this would be really great for practice um, maybe a, a, the next day after we do some exploration awesome so I'll use the prior knowledge questions as a bell ringer when they come in I'll use the gizmo warm-up and activity A as whole class instruction, which will allow them to create their own uh, formula for how you figure unit rate, in this case speed. And then we'll use activity B for uh, practicing in pairs, calculating the unit rate. Okay, we'll do that the next day. So let's take a look at the teacher's guide. Oh, here vocabulary. Definitely we want to include the vocabulary. I'll have to look at the vocabulary sheet. And, oh, here's a nice activity we might use, maybe for review. And here are a couple of really great uh, discussion questions at the higher end of Bloom's taxonomy. I can probably incorporate those in. And scientific background. real-world 
connection with environmental connection. Okay, so some of this might be useful later. And then the assessment questions. Probably can use those as exit tickets, maybe on a slide. I like to make a script uh, using the answer key that in the Word version. So I pull that up and I start adding in directions for what I want to do, like a bell ringer questions on a slide or on the whiteboard as students enter the room, and then I highlight the actions that I take in uh, bright pink. That way I can see, okay, this is something to do. Um, and anything that I'm reading to the class, any questions and so forth, I highlight those in yellow. Okay, so I'm marking here that I want to review the answers with the students to the prior knowledge question after I've done my attendance and things like that. Hmm, okay. For the warm-up, I want a student to actually come up to the board. I do have a wireless mouse and uh, Sometimes I, instead of having them come up to the board, I'll just give them the wireless mouse and have them control it from their seats. So I want the student to come up and control the gizmo to do this. I'm going to read this so that I can set the setting for them. have the student do these things but I am able to see that these are the questions that I'm asking while the student is doing it and then uh, we'll switch over to the playback tape playback tab and do the analysis you know what though let me think about this I think that uh, I'll have the student actually hand off the wireless mouse to somebody else, allowing the student to pick the next person to come up. So it's almost like they're in, in pairs, one collecting the data and the other analyzing the data. And that way we add one more person to be involved. Okay, and I want to review all of these as we do that. So I want to highlight all of them. Okay, before I have them go on to activity A where they're going to explore explore how to find a rate of change, I think I want to have them think a little bit about what they've just seen and devise a way on their own to measure speed. So let's see the question. Now that you've seen the gizmo, how, how would you measure the speed of an animal? I think I'll have them do this in pairs and I always give them just a limited amount of time because otherwise they can start talking about a million things. So now I've finished my entire script, uh, including activity A, and I'll just go over what I've, what I've done here. So I start with the bell ringer on the board and review the questions with the students. I decided that uh, as I'm going over those questions, I want to open the vocabulary sheet that's on the left there and review that with them, those two words and that will help to scaffold them when they go to devise their own method. Let's see, and uh, then I'm selecting a student, you saw all of that. Then when I get to activity A, I'm selecting a new student to collect video and then again having them pass it over to another student. Uh, I actually asked the students to use their whiteboards and to hold up an answer to one of the questions which will allow students to all participate now that we've critiqued their methods for determining speed, we're going to give them a method. And I'm going to put this method on a slide so that they have it in front of them. And they're going to collect data 
and compare their method to the one that I've given them. That ends the first day's lesson. I'm going to use assessment questions one and two. I'm going to put those on slides and use those as an exit ticket for my students so that I can see how well they understood what we've done. When they come in the next day, I will use question three as a bell ringer to get them warmed up. And then we're going to use activity B in pairs on computers so that they can get practice uh, calculating speed. Uh, we'll use question four then as an exit ticket on day two. And on day three, uh, I'm going to use question five, which is a little more complex, as the question of the day before we go into their textbook to look at other types of unit rates and transfer what they've learned from speed to other measures of unit rate. I hope this video is useful for you as you plan your whole group instruction lessons with Gizmos. For more information on Gizmos, go to www.explorelearning.com.